Hey folks, welcome to part 7 of manual testing interview question series. Let's begin. Mention some of the difference between smoke and sanity testing. Smoke testing verifies the core functionality of the application is working or not. But the sanity testing is done to check the basic functionality of the bug fix or new feature is working fine or not. The major difference lies between this itself. Whenever you get a new build, you will check the um, application, right? Whether you are able to log in or you are able to navigate to certain major screens or not. That is what smoke testing is. But sanity testing is when, suppose say, uh, transfers was broken. So you had reported it. So now you have got that bug fix in that build. So you will perform the transfers and the actions, you know, around it. You will play around that particular uh, part of the application. That is called sanity testing. This is a major difference. It verifies the stability of the system, whereas the sanity testing verifies the rationality of the system. Smoke testing is usually documented and scripted, and but the sanity testing is not at all documented or scripted. We will also have automation for smoke testing. Whenever we get a new build, we'll run the automation to check whether uh, the smoke testing is working fine or not. The major or the uh, you know important features of the application is working fine or not. Whereas the smoke testing is a subset of acceptance testing, but the sanity testing is a subset of regression testing. Smoke testing focuses on entire system from end to end, whereas the sanity testing focuses on selected component of the system. Going ahead, what is test coverage? It is a metric that measures the amount of testing performed on the software while executing the test cases. We will uh, write the test case, right? We will also have to check how much coverage that we have written. Okay, that is what is a test coverage. Test coverage for any software can be calculated by the percentage of the number of test cases or the coverage items covered with respect to the total number of test cases written. Okay, the higher the test coverage and it is signifies it is more stable and how uh, also the accuracy can be calculated for that reason test coverage is important to check the formula uh, test execution coverage is equal to total number of executed test cases or the scripts divided by total number of test cases or scripts planned to be executed it into 100 so how do you define or how do you get the coverage is the number of Test cases that you executed divided by the number of test cases you plan to execute. Okay. Going ahead. Uh, what is requirement traceability metrics? Requirement traceability metrics, which is also known as RTM, is a document used to ensure that the requirements defined for a system are linked to the at every point during the verification process. If you um, just see this RNT, if you can just remember RNT requirement, it is just about the requirement versus the test case. Okay, how much um, coverage you have done, how much you are you are just linking it. This is your requirement, and this is the uh, test case that you have defined it, or th this is th these are these many test cases you have written for this particular requirement. R versus T, requirement versus test case okay and it is a tabulated document which defines the coverage of the requirement with the test cases it is a just tabular column which is having the um, you know overall uh, idea of how how many requirements were there and how it is uh, been executed how do you perform risk analysis so risk analysis Whenever we are working on specific module, we might get some of the critical uh, risks. At that time, we have to deal with that before we, uh, you know, 
step into that before we start developing it we have to think of what risk can come what how to resolve such risk so in that case one technique for risk analysis is a close reading of the requirement specification design specification user documentation and other items but the understanding is important so we have to go through all the requirement specification design specification user documentation all the things another technique is brainstorming with project stakeholders so whenever you talk with the uh, people you know product people or the pro project uh, you know team you will get better understanding of how it is and uh, and what the risks could be you can get that analysis done another is a sequence of one to one or small group session with business and technology experts in the company uh, for an experienced people or experienced candidate uh, these kind of questions will be asked have you ever done the risk analysis all this type of questions can be asked what is hotfix hotfix is a critical fix that must be deployed on production to patch the issue impacting the client business okay major functionality is broken now we have to immediately fix it typically this is a single error fix that is deployed to fix an important business scenario uh, to give you an example if login functionality itself is not working which is broken now it needs to be fixed or addressed immediately right or else the transfers is not working okay at that time it is very much important to fix it as it is in business critical or uh, it impacts the business okay uh, so it as an individual component or else it is uh, you know fixed individually and then it is tested and deployed to production it is just a piece or part of it will be deployed it is not like whole release okay when a major issue occurs in production a hotfix must be deployed to solve this specific issue and a release that is planned to patch the specific or uh, uh, critical issue is called as hotfix release the term used for that is hotfix what is the difference between error bug and failure so this is also uh, just to see how, how your understanding is in between error bug and failure this question will be asked error is nothing but it is a mistake made by the programmer okay this could happen because of not proper understanding of the requirement because of that the error has caused okay whereas the defect is something which is deviated from the expectation right it is a mistake found by the testing team and it is a bug introduced by the programmer inside the code which is known as a defect even though it, he has the requirement he has um, misdone it he ha because of error error in the code it is causing a defect whereas failure it is an inability of the program to perform the required action let's say um, under circum cir uh, certain circumstances a defect got executed by the tester during the testing and it results into failure which is known as software failure but um, for example you perform something you clicked on submit button and the application failed and it throwed some error which it could not proceed further okay that is a failure mention some of the attributes of test case whenever you write your test case in the excel format or something so you will be having a good knowledge of what attributes you will be having but it is also good uh, certain tools will also have different fields based on that you can answer this question test case id it is an unique identifier of the test case test summary it is just an one liner summary of the test case 
and description it is a detailed description of what the test case is okay and precondition it is an precondition which says that before executing the test steps what you have to take care okay next is test step test step is a detailed step for performing the test case expected result is the expected result in order to pass the test what is the condition or what is that after performing all the steps what the expectation is actual result what happened after executing it this is your expectation after you execute it what was the what uh, result did it give it uh, in in back okay, that is what is actual result test result it says that whether the test uh, case is passed or failed and finally executed by it is the name of the person who executed this test case so some of the uh, attributes that i've mentioned here and the next question is what is a blocker defect and give an example of it um, so you might have heard this is a blocker defect this is a blocker defect what does it mean a blocker is a bug of high priority and high severity it prevents or blocks the testing of some other major portion of the application okay to give you an example i have taken uh, an example of let's take a generic application like phone pay or google pay okay and you are not able to perform the transaction okay it is actually blocking the business right it is a blocker you are not able to perform at all it is you are a real time user and it is impacting you it is a blocker defect correct so in case it is found in the lower environments that will be a blocker defect too right so this is what is blocker defect is it is of high priority and high severity it is this what is a blocker defect is this is all for part 7 thank you for watching